Uh, that, that was, was a, very disappointing. His legs were not what they should have been. His back wasn't what he should have been. His condition was off. All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. We're going to talk about the reason why Big Rami lost, according to the head judge, um, and a, a couple other interesting topics. The first topic I want to talk about is this video that's been going viral, this reel, this TikTok, whichever one it started on, um, that has the, the caption on there, bodybuilders are broke. So this guy was talking about the prize money for classic physique, and obviously he was being a little bit facetious with the title. He admitted that he knew that Chris makes a lot of money off his sponsorships and his companies, and the bodybuilders are broke part was more of like a clickbait tagline. But here again, we have this interesting discussion. Is the classic physique division underpaid and underappreciated? You guys might have seen in the Arnold interview that I did, Arnold said that he actually thinks that the classic physique Olympia is the Mr. Olympia. That should be the main Mr. Olympia competition, which is a kind of a hot take. But the guy in this reel actually made a very good point. He said, you know, think about if you've been on Instagram or social media the past few days, how often you've seen pictures of Chris Bumstead with millions of likes or videos with millions of views. Chris Bumstead's face and name is everywhere. Think of what that is doing as far as promotion for not only the Olympia, but the IFBB. Chris is the biggest face of bodybuilding. And it is a little bit shocking to know that he's getting paid $50,000 to win the only show that he competes in all year. The biggest show, the biggest prize in his sport, and yes, he gets endorsement opportunities. Yes, I'm sure he's a multi-millionaire by now. But the question is, shouldn't there be more prize money from the sport alone? All right, guys, today's video is sponsored by Morgan and Morgan Law Firm. Did you know that in 2020, there were over 5 million car crashes? That's more than 15,000 a day and 600 per hour. Those in an accident can be entitled to more than you think. And that's where Morgan and Morgan comes into play. When you're injured, you deserve compensation and the size of your law firm matters. Morgan and Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 800 lawyers in 100 offices nationwide. The best part is Morgan & Morgan's fee is completely free unless they win your case. Over 3 million people trust Morgan & Morgan, and getting started is easy. You can check out the link in the comment section below for more information. Now, with that being said, the Arnold did step up this year, and they bumped their prize money to $60,000 for the winner of Classic Physique at the Arnold Classic. The Olympia prize money for Classic Physique in first place has stayed the same the past two years, $50,000. A lot of people argue that Classic Physique is not only becoming as popular as men's open bodybuilding in terms of just the overall appeal, but some would argue it's becoming more popular than men's open bodybuilding. Yet men's open bodybuilding still receives 10 times, almost 10 times, the prize money for first place. $400,000 for first at the Men's Open Bodybuilding Olympia and $50,000 for first for Classic Physique. So there's still quite a large disparity between the two categories. And I guess the question is why? And I think honestly, part of that answer is the number of divisions that they basically have to hold at the Olympia. And again, this goes back to the conversation of the Arnold cutting divisions. I think a lot of people watching that live stream of the Olympia and a lot of people in the audience at the Olympia, a lot of people in the audience were messaging me from the audience saying this, the show was too long. There were too many divisions. The people that were sitting there in the crowd were saying to me, Man, I'm uncomfortable. I've been sitting here all night, six hours. One of the nights that started at 9 Eastern time and ended at 3 a.m. Eastern time. People were messaging me from their seats saying they're bored. They've got to pee. They're hungry. They're tired. They're dehydrated because they've been sitting in the crowd for six hours. So I know a lot of you guys were watching the stream thinking the stream was long. But imagine being in the crowd for six hours. And it's not just the length of the show. But they've got to pay the top five in all those divisions. So there's not a lot of prize money to go around when you're spreading it so thin outside of men's open bodybuilding. So I would still argue that right now the men's open Olympia is the biggest eyeball draw. But classic physique is getting very, very close. If you look at the videos that I did on both men's open and classic physique, 
Classic Physique had very comparable views. I think some of the Classic Physique videos almost got 600,000 views, where the Men's Open ones might be at 700 or 800,000. So while I think it's getting close, I still think Men's Open is the biggest draw. That's why they're paid the most. But I think what really makes it challenging for the Olympia to increase the prize money significantly of any given category outside of Men's Open is the fact that they've got all these other divisions, that they've got to pay all these other athletes. And I think that is part of why the Arnold has to cut some divisions or chose to cut some divisions because they can raise the prize money in the ones that people seem to really enjoy, like Classic Physique. Also, they announced that the Olympia was going back to Florida for 2023 from Vegas. So it moved back to Vegas. Now it's going back to Florida. And I would conjecture that that was probably a financial decision because everybody was excited that it was in Vegas. You guys saw all these gyms that are in Vegas. You had all these Olympians in these gyms. Everybody's doing collabs. Everybody's doing podcasts. Everybody's doing photo shoots. Everybody's filming content. Everyone was excited in Vegas, having a good time, including, you know, everybody that runs the Olympia seemed to be excited to have it there in Vegas at the location and the venue they had it at. But Vegas, I would imagine, is significantly more expensive than Orlando, Florida. So maybe we will see if they save money on this move back to Florida, an increase in possibly the classic physique prize money next year. But I really want to know what your guys' opinion is in the comment section below. Do you think the Classic Physique Division is underpaid as far as actually competing what they get in return for their placings and prize money? I know they all make really good money. Well, not all of them, but a lot of the top guys make really good promotional sponsorship money. But should they be rewarded more financially for their actual participation in the sport in competing? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, we got a really interesting one here. So on the Olympia TV, Olympia Productions um, Insta, uh, YouTube channel, they did a really good interview with Tarek El Gundi, Bob Ciccarello, Hani Rambod, and Hadi Chupin, and Steve Weinberger, who was the head judge at the Olympia. And right off the top, and by the way, I think Tarek does a really good job with his channel. You guys should check, you should check it out. But right off the top, Steve Weinberger is asked by Tarek, what happened with Big Rami? Why did Rami lose? And, and Steve did not hold back. I'm going to roll that clip for you guys right here. Uh, that, that was, it was a, very disappointing. His legs were not what they should have been. His back wasn't what he should have been. His condition was off. His body parts were off. And honestly, it did not look like the Rami of 2020. More of the Rami of 2021 just even in worse a condition in 2021. He he came down even worse in 21. So he said basically everything. He said his back was disappointing, his legs were disappointing, he that Rami was overall disappointing, his conditioning was off. It looked like he was injured, it looked like he had this nerve damage thing that people are talking about. He wasn't hitting the poses correctly or fully, such as the back double bicep, that was one that they mentioned specifically and I think they also mentioned the side tricep. So we got a clear answer, a clear reason from Steve, the head judge, on why Rami lost. He said it wasn't the same Rami that we saw in 2020. And then Bob Ciccarello even went as far to say he thinks if, if he were Rami, he's done. He would hang up his hat right off into the sunset and this would be his last Olympia if he were Rami. Now what we still don't have an answer on is from Rami's camp, from Rami or Chad, on what exactly the injury is, what the extent of the injury is, if there is one, what went wrong with his protocol, if something went wrong, was it timing, did he miss his peak, or going back to the earlier discussion, I saw, you know, it could have been that these guys were waiting around for so long backstage, or at least this could have been a factor, maybe not the entire reason for Rami looking the way he looked, but the prejudging and the finals, these guys went on last. These guys were backstage for four or five, maybe six hours, just waiting to go on stage. Could that have thrown off their physiques at all? But we still haven't gotten that answer directly from Rami on what he thinks went wrong or what may have gone wrong, what the injury was, etc. We did get this posing video from Rami that we're watching right now at one week out. We got posing pictures from Dennis James from one week out, which both of them seem to be implying Hey, look at me. I looked good at one week out. Something happened in between these pictures, this video, and actually getting on stage. That, I think, is the main implication of them posting a week-old footage instead of Olympia footage. 
But my question to you guys is why do you think Rami lost? What is the reason or what is the thing that stuck out to you the most when you saw Rami? Was it the lumps on his glutes or his quads? Was it his conditioning? Was it his back? Was it his triceps? Was it all of the above? And also my other question to you guys would be, is Rami done? Now I did hear a rumor that remains unconfirmed, but it is a rumor that makes sense nonetheless, that Rami may be doing the Arnold Classic in March. I think it's being pitched to Rami by his team right now as like an opportunity to redeem himself. I think most people right now are thinking Rami's not going to win another Olympia, even though Rami did a video saying he'll be back. I think he has better odds, a lot better odds, of winning the Arnold Classic if he's going to win anything else during his career. A lot of people are saying he is done. The Rami that won in 2020 is no longer the Rami we're seeing. A lot of people think he can't bring that package again. I honestly think that now that Hadi Chupin has been given the title, there's a chance that he reigns for a while because we talk about this a lot, how consistent Hadi has been over the past four Olympias, this one included, his conditioning has been incredible. It's been consistent. He barely slips at all. Rami has been very inconsistent. I think it's going to be hard for Rami to move up in Olympia placings, let alone come back and beat Hadi who you know what Hadi's going to be. You know what he's going to bring. You never really know with Rami what he's going to bring. So I guess my third question to you is, should Rami be done? Can he compete at the Arnold Classic and win that show? Does he even have a shot at that, depending on who's in it? Right now I'm hearing Samson may be doing it. I'm hearing Raphael may be doing it. I'm hearing Brandon Curry is a maybe at this point. Maybe Bonac. It looks like Andrew Jack and Crizzo won't be doing the Arnold. Nick Walker just responded to a comment on his Instagram today saying he's officially not doing the Arnold this year. So that was kind of a maybe, then it was a no, and now we have confirmation after his Olympia placing. He's not doing it, focusing on the Olympia next year. So in the absence of some of these top Olympians at the Arnold, does Rami have a shot if he does choose to do it? Now, it's worth mentioning he only competed in the Arnold Ohio one other time and he was third, and that was in 2020. Then he would go on to win the Olympia later that year. But let me know what you guys think about these stories in the comment section below. Is classic physique underpaid? Is Rami done? Let me know. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram, at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.